Unit 9, Part 2, Scaling Issues. In this section, we're going to discuss the issues related to scaling operations to different sizes. What is scaling? Scaling means identifying the steps and timeline necessary to take an operation from the pilot or experimental stage to a larger size and potentially to the largest size that's sustainable or conversely using the same techniques to reduce the size of an operation while maintaining or even improving productivity. But for the most part, we're going to be discussing scaling up to larger operations. Proper scaling may mean changing some techniques or operations of the pilot program that may be found to be unsustainable on a larger scale. Often simply doing the same thing on a larger scale doesn't give the same results as when it's done on a smaller scale. And note that each part of a scale operation may not have the same productivity as the pilot. There is usually a point of diminishing returns. Anything larger than certain size is going to result in lowered productivity or profit or revenue per square foot, however you want to measure the success of your scaling operation. Um, you may end up, and is typical ending up with, areas that are less productive, some areas that are more productive. So scaling also means identifying what's the acceptable range of productivity for the operation as a whole and try not to exceed the scale at which that range uh, can be met. So let's talk about some differences in the scale of production. Urban agriculture is distinctly different from large scale rural agriculture, and that difference presents in several ways. First, urban agriculture usually involves many different crops rather than being a large monoculture. On a typical uh, large corporate farm in the developed world, um, you may find one or two crops being grown. In the Midwest, it's common for uh, farms with, you know, say 500 acres to grow 250 acres of corn and 250 acres of soybean. Um, in other areas, you may have 500 acres and you might grow five different crops. Um, but usually there's a limit there because it's more efficient in large scale agriculture to grow a few things rather than growing many different things, each of which might require a uh, different technique, a different amount of labor, a different amount of water, a different amount of fertilizer, that sort of thing. Next, urban agriculture is usually done on a smaller scale. You don't find thousand acre urban agricultural operations typically. So the scale is often measured in square feet rather than in acres. The equipment used in urban agriculture is also smaller scale because of the smaller scale of the operation. You may see rototillers being used instead of big tractors, baskets or wheelbarrows for harvesting rather than combines or trucks. And finally, human involvement is greater per acre or square foot that is under cultivation and usually greater per dollar amount of food produced than it is on a typical farm. That doesn't mean that urban agriculture is less profitable percentage-wise than regular farming um, because there's a trade-off there. You have more human involvement. You have less involvement of larger, expensive to purchase, expensive to maintain, and expensive to operate equipment. Uh, you're not running tractors that burn gallons of fuel per hour. Um, and so there is a trade-off with this greater human involvement and less mechanical involvement, let's say. So let's take a look at the scale of production 
versus productivity. Scale of production is often used synonymously with productivity, but that isn't necessarily or even usually the case. Um, for instance, large-scale agriculture likes to equate the number of people fed by a single farmer to productivity. Um, one issue with using that as a measure is that most large-scale farms produce only a few, often one or two crops. Um, and it doesn't take into account the amount of land used, the resources used, like fuel, fertilizer, irrigation, pesticides, etc. You're just saying this farmer farms 500 acres of land and produces so many tons of food, a person eats an average of however many pounds of food per year, so this farmer feeds this many people. But it might not be uh, a, the best way or even really a good way to look at productivity versus scale of production. So how should we look at productivity? Well, a good measure of productivity is output per acre or per square foot, depending on how large your operation is. Um, and by this measure, urban agriculture and smaller scale agriculture in general often greatly exceeds traditional large scale agriculture in productivity. Um, in a previous unit, we saw a, uh, a video about an urban farmer who produces 6,000 pounds or more of food on a one quarter acre lot feeds a family of four and has enough surplus to generate an income of $20,000 per year. That level of productivity measured in output per square foot um, exceeds virtually any large corporate farm. The traditional formula for productivity in any industry, not just agriculture, is the price of outputs divided by the cost of inputs. And by that formula, urban and small scale agriculture in general can often be more productive than large scale agriculture. So we need to, I think, be fair in our measures of productivity and we need to understand that high productivity and large scale are not necessarily synonymous. So what are some of the issues that we encounter in scaling up? Well, if something's productive on a small scale, it isn't necessarily as productive when you do it on a larger scale because costs can increase out of proportion to the increase in revenues. Hired workers cost more than the hourly rate they're paid because, for example, you have to pay FICA or the employer's share of Social Security. You have to pay workers' compensation insurance. You have to pay unemployment insurance. So paying someone $10 an hour typically costs $12, $13, $14 an hour in real out-of-your-pocket costs. Um, then when you involve someone else in your operation, you have to have some type of liability insurance to cover those people. So some of those costs increase at a higher rate than you might expect your revenue return. Um, and then if you have a single location, costs that didn't exist before suddenly can become huge if you have to add a second location to expand your site. Transportation, for instance, between the sites, that might require a vehicle or an additional vehicle or at least additional food costs that, or fuel costs that you didn't have before moving back and forth. You may need some sort of communication between the sites. So you're gonna put in an additional phone line or you're gonna buy a cell phone, you're gonna pay the additional charges, that sort of thing. Um, and there are other issues with 
as we mentioned in security, securing the new site and that sort of thing. Um, we're going to do an exercise uh, field assignment uh, lab sort of thing um, that'll deal more specifically with some of these issues and show how scaling up um, isn't necessarily just a matter of repeating what you've been doing, but requires a bit more planning. So in summary, changing the size of a successful operation is often more difficult than it appears. Simply adding more land or workers often results in cost increases out of proportion with revenue or production increases. It requires a careful study of what works and what doesn't work in the existing operation. And you have to be honest about this when you're thinking of scaling up an operation. Scaling is often more successful when it can be done in discrete units where costs and revenues or productivity can be more precisely estimated. For instance, if you're running a successful urban agriculture operation on two acres, you may find scaling easier if when you scale up, you do another two acre plot. You know what works on your first plot. It's likely that those things will work on the second plot. So the issues that you're gonna have are those incremental costs that you don't have when you have just one location. That's supervisory for the second, you know, personnel for the second plot, transportation, communications, and that sort of thing. Um, and those costs can be relatively easy to identify. So if you can do discrete units like that, it works pretty well. If you are doing two acres and you decide that you're going to scale up to 10 acres, uh, it might be a little different and it might require a little more study. So we'll do some exercises as part of this unit and we'll see what some of those issues are. And later on, we'll talk about how to deal with those issues that come up. And that's the end of this unit.